So we are driving home, Damon and I, because we just went and got some late night dinner at our favorite, well, my favorite restaurant in town, which is Culver's. Um, Damon just puts up with it because <laughs> we get it a lot. But anyway, we saw this, uh, this yard and I told him that we needed to stop because I needed to show you guys how cool is this. My camera makes the lights that are orange look a little bit red, but they're orange and they look so cool. And look at the little ghosties. Aren't they adorable? And they have ghosties hanging from the tree that aren't lit up. I love it so much. What, Damon? Huh? Yeah, there's somebody coming. Are they on a bike? They're turning, okay. We're safe, nobody's gonna be in shot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this is the season, you know, this in December will be Can creeping on people's houses. Yeah, I already showed them the tree once. I'll show it again. What about the mm, pumpkin cool. things in front of the tree? I don't know if I can zoom in enough. Without... Oh yeah, there we go. A little bit. I mean, it's fuzzy because I'm way zoomed in, but isn't that cool? There's something back here too. Isn't, isn't it? Quite it's tell. very fuzzy. I think it might be a skeleton hand or something. Oh yeah, like zombies coming out to pray. Yeah. Very cool though. I love the fact that somebody else is decorating, but we're gonna get home with the food because David's probably wondering where we are because tonight, sadly, Culver's did mess our dinner up twice, so. <laughs> but um, we're going to get going. But hopefully you enjoy it as much as we do. It's very pretty. Um, and we'll, as we see them, we'll show you guys some more. All right, I love you guys. Bye. Hey guys, it's Heather the Crochet Witch. How are you guys doing today, tonight, whatever time it is for you? It's night for me. Um, welcome to day 
4 of Vlogtober. I love saying that. Uh, the magic is in the air. <laughs> um, so, how was your day? <laughs> um, not gonna lie, today has been for me. Um, just nothing bad, like nothing like catastrophic. Cause, well, because I'm dramatic, something catastrophic has happened. Some of you already know, and some of you have found out on your own, and you probably know what I'm about to talk about. But aside from that, just people have been moody and <laughs> like I was grumpy earlier, but I got out of it. Some people have not. <laughs> You know those days. It, it's been one. Let me tell you what. Um, but I'm with you guys now. And we're going to ignore that. <laughs> um, you guys always make me feel better anyway. Like all your comments. And you guys always make me feel better. Um, so anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't even remember what I filmed. Like I know we found a Halloween house tonight. And... Um, I ran into Menards this morning, but there was nothing like crazy noteworthy that you haven't seen on the other trip that, uh, I filmed. So I didn't film anything then. Um, I went to the doctor this morning. As I said, he was like, as I expected, he was not impressed <laughs> with like the amount of weight that I lost. He, he was impressed, but not impressed enough. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Um, so I have another checkup in like January. He's like, yeah, let's talk again after the holidays. And I'm like, oh, the holidays. I don't even want to think about that checkup. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> um, yeah. Other than that, I watched some shows. Um, I watched a lot of YouTube today and caught up with some of you guys. Um, I got tagged yesterday um, in the 30, 30 Halloween questions. Um, hmm. Why do you suppose it's not 31? <laughs> Maybe I should add one. Um, anyway, from Neva, yes. Yes. And uh, I will do them. I am going to do them. I'm excited to do them. But definitely in a different video because like my vlogtobers are apparently already super long winded. Uh, I could not possibly add them on like to this video <laughs> or one of my videos. And I know today's is going to be because let me tell you what, when I get to spooky story time. Uh, so yesterday I told you about like one of my personal ones and I'm going to stretch those out over over the month because like I said I did like yesterday was what two or three of them two of them at least together so I don't want to run out of them because I, I have like quite a few but probably not enough to be standalone stories for the entire month um but I took I took notes today there's it, it's they're little notebooks or little note pages they're like decorative on one side but I took I took notes today <laughs> Um, so it's going to be some story time. I brought, I brought a beverage today. <laughs> so, you know, maybe you want to take this moment to pause and go get a beverage <laughs> for yourself or a snack or, cause I bet it's going to be a long one. I'm just, I'm just going to say that. Um, so I will try to be as brief as I can with some of this, but yeah, other than that, uh, it was a pretty pretty uneventful day. I kind of like kept to myself for the most part today because of grumpiness being spread. Um, this morning, what, what I said you, some of you guys already know about, uh, is I have quite the rant, but I'm going to attempt to keep it minimal. But you know, yesterday I was so excited. I was so excited. I got up this morning. My doctor's appointment was at nine. That's not why I was excited. <laughs> we all know that already. But my doctor's appointment was at nine. Um, today was the day <clears throat> that Lion Brand said 
they were unveiling or they they their literal words i believe were things were getting stranger at lion brand on october 3rd now i know an awful lot of us i know i wasn't the only one who apparently jumped the gun and uh thought that that meant yarn because there's been two or three other shows that have gotten yarn released um i know that a certain creeks show has got i've never seen the show but i know it's a show and i know that i'm not a fan of the yarn <laughs> that's why i was hoping the stranger things yarn would be awesome um but i know that's been a yarn line i know downton abbey had yarn um because i barely saw the very end of the clearance of that and i wish that i had gotten some of that and uh i didn't know i don't know i didn't know it was a show i've never heard of the show being a show but i was told that heartland is named after a show i thought it was just named after like national parks and things like that um because i know it does have names that are like national parky and stuff but um i guess heartland is a show also I had no idea. But so either, you know, two, three different yarn lines from shows. So naturally, I think when they announced that things were going to be stranger, they went through a whole graphics thing. Like um, we had even been talking, uh, Samantha and I had even been talking about like speculating on the yarn label. And she was even saying maybe the graphic that they released, because it was like... <sighs> pastel it was eye-catchingly colored, like watercolored. It wasn't pastel I guess, but it was watercolored, yet darkish. So she was speculating maybe that was the artwork that would be on the yarn ball band. Um, I know Carrie Penny and I were in my, on my Facebook group, we were in a post going back and forth discussing different possibilities for yarn colors. Um, oh, I've been um, on messenger and text and stuff chatting with several ladies about my excitement and different possibilities for yarns and I had this bright idea to email Lion Brand and I emailed them and I let them know like I yes I'm that crazy person but I said you know like I'm super stoked about this Stranger Things release um, I was like I would love to feature every single color of yarn and I had worded it that way, every single color of the yarn on my YouTube channel. So I was hoping before it sells out to get it. I, like I didn't want to wake up later in the day because you know I wake up super late normally. Um, I, I didn't want to wake up later in the day and find something sold out, like a col certain color or whatever, depending on like what they were doing. So I was like, would you possibly be able to tell me if you have a certain time that the website tends to stock new yarn and uh I signed it you know I signed my name and everything and they wrote back and they thanked me for my enthusiasm and they said uh that the web store that the website usually uh stocks their store of new items between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, they said um, to make sure, you know, the usual, like, make sure you follow our social media because then you'll get the updates when it comes out and, you know, everything like that, which um, I already do follow their social media and have the notifications on for those social medias. And I actually did not get any, anything saying that today, but that's neither here nor there because I was stalking the website regardless only to find out. Well, actually, I got way too curious for my own good. And I started Googling last night. And I started just Googling Lion Brand Yarn and Stranger Things just together to see what comes up. When apparently, they had tweeted that they were releasing patterns, kits, <laughs> at that. Um, The kits did not even have different yarn that was like Stranger Things. They didn't even take like existing yarn and put a Stranger Things label on it, I don't think. Um, like I, I bet anyway, because 
apparently uh, some of the yarn that isn't included in the kit that you'd have to buy on the site, that wasn't even like stocked today, uh, it was pointed out to me. Um, the kits are just stocked with regular Vanna White yarn. Like Vanna's Choice, I mean that. Well, it is Vanna White's yarn, but it's called Vanna's Choice. And there are three kits, meaning three patterns, and uh, I believe there's only, I thought two were crochet, but um, when I was like basically crying to my friends, one somebody said only one of them was crochet, and that's the, it's a Scoops Ahoy uh, collar, like for a costume. Um, the other one is Eddie's jacket, which apparently is knit. I guess I need to go relook at that, even though I, I didn't because I'm just so... <laughs> um, and then the other one is definitely knit. I did look at that. It's leg warmers that look like 11 socks. And like great for the patterns, but I'm so, so bummed that they were just a pattern kit with regular Vanna's Choice yarn. I, I know that it's my own fault for assuming because you know what happens when you assume, but I can't help but think like couldn't that lady have just said in the letter it's not like when I obviously thought it was yarn couldn't she just have said something if they had already tweeted it and I clearly didn't see the tweet or I'm very upset right now <laughs> disappointed um so I will not know what it feels like to be like a Downton Abbey fan and get the Downton Abbey yarn because there is no Stranger Things yarn so it was a very bad start to the day <laughs> very bad indeed um that was my grumpiness uh, this morning, but I, I eventually, I mean, I got over it. What can you do? You know, there's no point in being, what am I going to do? Project my anger on everybody around me because Lion Brand didn't put out something that I wanted them to. I can't. What's the point in that? So I decided to drown my sorrow by purchasing, uh, oh, I got itchy eye. Um, by purchasing some more, like, bougie yarn from another yarn dyer. Well, the same yarn dyer that I got my Eddie yarn from, Madeline Tosh. If you didn't know, Madeline Tosh not only has the Eddie yarn, but they have... I don't... They didn't specifically say this is a line of Stranger Things yarn, but it's a line of Stranger Things yarn. Um... Some of the names are not, like, in-your-face Stranger Things. It's not, like, Will Byers this or, you know, anything like that. Um, much, like, like, Eddie Munson, Hero of Hawkins, in-your-face, totally screaming Stranger Things. Um, but there are names that are, like, um, let me think. I think one is called Friends Don't Lie or Friends Tell the Truth, I think is the name of it. One is called, it's something to do with the arcade, and that's a really pretty color too, by the way. Um, that'll probably be the one I get next. Um, I want to say it's called Upside Down Arcade, but I might be wrong about that. But I mean, there's probably, from memory, maybe like 10 different colors. There's Barbara Deserved Better. And there's two versions. There's like a solid and a multicolor of that. Um, there's 11 light and 11 dark. <laughs> so there's two different ones of that. Um, yeah, there's, there's multiple different ones. So I did not have enough money clearly for all of them because uh, it is pricey it's probably pricier than anything lion brand would have put out unless they put out like 
I don't know, a hundred percent cashmere, or I don't, maybe not even, I don't know, <laughs> because I don't think has Lion Brand had a hundred percent cashmere. They've had cashmere yarn, but. But um, I got some because I used the money I had saved from two paychecks now to, um, I was just going to like buy like every color they had in multiples. And so I could, I had planned, like, like I said, I was going to, I was going to show it off in a haul. I was going to review it. I was going to do projects with it. I was, <laughs> you guys were going to be so sick of seeing that yarn by the time I was done, but I had so many like plans and I hadn't even seen it yet. And I never will because it's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so when that comes I will show you actual Stranger Things yarn it just won't be the Lion brand <laughs> so anyway rant over I am sorry but some negativity had to seep in there I made it as positive as I could but I'm highly unthrilled right now um yeah very disappointing but it'll be okay. It will be okay. I am still planning um, to contact one of the, um, like from Etsy or something, one of the um, dyers and get some made, some colorways just for me made. And I am still planning to get like a hopper specific colorway that I want hopper to be. I'm going to get a Hopper colorway, a Steve colorway, and then I think I'm going to have a Heather colorway made. So from my fan fiction, I can have a blanket with the three of us. I think that would be so perfect, even though it may be weird to you guys. So that makes me happy. <laughs> anyway, I really am done um, ranting about things I can't control. <laughs> uh, so yesterday, I introduced you to these monster universal monster collectible uh like capsules the little these little balls right here um walmart does have some others um i was saying they had like um halloween they have um i can't i want to say gizmo gremlins um they have i can't think of the other ones they have because those those were the other two that i was thinking about getting and then these but they have I think maybe like five or six other ones. Um, so I may get Gremlins next. I'm really heavily thinking that. Gremlins has been like jumping out at me ever since I saw these. So um, that might be the next one that I get. If these are if these are cool. Because we knew yesterday what this was, which was a keychain with Frankenstein on it. Because that one was open. So now we're into the mysteries. So let us pick, let us pick another one. Which one do you think? Which one? This one? Right here? This one? No, this one? Okay, get this one. So it is just a little, like the kind you get out of a vending machine kind of capsule. Let's pop it open. What do we got? We have... Oh, is this a magnet? Let me get it out of the plastic. They're apparently all in little plastic, which is kind of cool. So it's protected so it doesn't get um, scratched. I don't I think I have anything metal to attach this to. Is this metal? I don't think that's metal. Oh, anyway, sorry. Uh, I believe this is a magnet from the looks of the back. But it is the mummy. Oh, Focus. How cool. Look at those melty letters back there. And it's really nice detail on that, right? That is really, really cool. I love it. And I will let you know if it's a magnet or not tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it is. I, mm, I don't have anything metal. Are these metal? Like, are these? It's, it is. I don't even have to tell you tomorrow. So we have a mummy magnet. That's so cool. I love that. Honestly, that in the keychain, I think this was worth the bag already. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay. So, we open that. Now, on to, because I do need to 
This is going to be super long if I don't get to it. Um, on to, you know what's coming. In my Stranger Things notebook here, we also have um, theories, predictions, um, I added in a few of my own that were not out there on the internet, but I did, like, I mean, I obviously watch anything that I can see the Stranger Things related on YouTube and read about it and stuff. Um, my phone knows that I love it so much that I get, like, news updates, and primarily they're all Stranger Things. Um, actually, right now on my phone is a news update that is David Harbour, <laughs> and it's the, uh, for his Christmas movie that I posted on the Facebook group about uh, the, he's like, I think it's an action movie. We'll see because this, this, um, I believe it said it's the trailer for it. Um, so I will be watching that after I film this, probably while this video is uploading. <sighs> Merry Christmas, Heather. It's David Harbour. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm gonna get way off topic. So in this, lovely notebook that was made and gifted to me has this one has l all over it <laughs> all over it <laughs> um i like this one fight like a girl <laughs> anyway um there are 31 different like i said theories predictions topics i guess is a good like to talk about um and then I have basically been talking about how I, like, if I think they're going to be true, if I think there's merit to them, if I don't think there's merit to them, um, or why, <clears throat> or if I just want to believe them. <laughs> so, and then I wholeheartedly encourage you guys, um, in the comments and I, and you have been, and I love it. I've been, I've read every single one of them. Um, no matter I, I know I haven't started commenting back, but I fully intend to start liking and commenting back on like all of the Vlogtober videos, all of them. Be but I've like, as they've come in, even I've been like, oh, is this Stranger Things talk? Like every single one of them, I've been so excited. Um, and I I'm excited even if it's not Stranger Things talk, but like, if it is, it just like geeks me out even more. <laughs> it does. Um, so getting on with it. Um, we have talked about a few already, obviously. Um, let us pick a new one. I think that would be too long for today. Okay, let's see. All right, I think we're gonna tackle this one because I feel well-versed enough to uh, talk about it. So the theory today <laughs> um, comes from season four. I don't know if it'll make an appearance in season five if it turns out to be true even. Like, I guess it'll be neither here nor there really. But um, now that everything's happened. But the theory is, um, you guys remember the guidance counselor, Miss Kelly, um, that talked to Max, that talked to, um, oh no, Chrissy. Um, I believe she's talked to Fred also. We're not really sure about Patrick, but we're pretty sure she also talked to Patrick. Basically all of the Vecna victims at one point or another talked to her. Um, the theory is that Miss Kelly is in league with Vecna. Um, that she knows about everything that's going on, and she is in league with him. That is the theory. So, to begin with, initially, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that's possible? Um, or you think it's just like a huge coincidence that all the kids saw her, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Which it could be. I mean, troubled kids see their counselors and... Um, Vecna was obviously looking for troubled troubled kids, right? So it's totally possible that it is just a coincidence that, you know, but, <laughs> but. And here's where you can tell that Heather kind of agrees with this. But again, I understand it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, 
my other thought, I have one other thought, but I'll tell you in a second. Remind me to tell you in a second, okay? <laughs> um, so it's, I think that it's possible. Um, there are several like kind of like clues or Easter eggs, whatever you want to call them. Um, and there's like the obvious things that I, like I had already said, the kids have all went and talked to her, but there's, um, the fact that Miss Kelly always has a necklace, like probably as dangly as mine, there's a necklace and it is a, um, clock, which, you know, the clock is already associated with Vecna. Um, there is the fact that's more like, I guess, Easter eggy or whatever, that, um, when, <clears throat> when Max went to visit her because she was trying to get information from her, um, she had Steve drop her off at, and wait for her at Miss Kelly's house, if you remember that, and she ended up stealing the keys to the, um, guidance counselor office, uh, I, I did not go back and rewatch the scene before I did this video, but I meant to. <laughs> um, but I remember so I was watching a few like theories on this topic, and one of the guys I was watching, um, I cannot remember his name, he said that all during the her stay at Miss Kelly's house, when she went down and was talking to her about everything, like all the way up to the time that she asked to go to the bathroom and then stole the keys and booked it out, um, there was like a clock ticking. Like she, cause she had, that was the other thing too. She, when Max went into the house, there was a big grandfather clock, I think, or at least a big clock on the wall or something, but there was a clock right there. There was a lot of clocks associated with Miss Kelly for her to not be lined up with Vecna in some way. Um, it's awfully big coincidence. Then when Max was trying to talk to her, um, when she was talking to her at her house, she was trying to get information from her. Um, I forget how she worded it, but she was basically like, so is there anything you can tell me about what Chrissy was going through because bad stuff's happening to me or like however she put it. And I mean, basically she was saying like, what should I watch out for? Because obviously something bad happened to Chrissy, like right across the road from me. Um, so like a scared child is coming to you about another dead child. And what does she do? She tries to pull, um, basically, uh, what is it called? Patient confidentiality. Except she doesn't even put it like that way. She just basically says, um, you know, I can't talk about that. Would you want me to talk about your business? And Max straight up tells her, like, if I died because something bad happened and that information could help somebody else not die yeah, I hope you tell everybody about it, you know, like, absolutely. And she was the, like, her response to that wasn't like, oh, like, that's, I didn't think of that, or oh, that's sweet. Or she, her response was like, well, too bad. I'll let the cops handle it. You know, she was, she was not having it like at all. And I, I guess I can't speak for the 80s because I was at one point, I was zero years old, but um, I was obviously very, very young during part of the 80s. And um, so I can't speak for like, you know, <laughs> very, very tiny child Heather knew the law then. But at least as far as the law now, I believe that um, patient, doctor patient confidentiality is not present after death, I think. Like, I'm not a lawyer now either, but I have heard that at least. And I mean, frankly, it's a TV show. <laughs> so she could have. She could have is my point. Um, and I don't know. I just feel like if even if that was the law, if I were the guidance counselor and I was totally innocent in all of this and I had like, oh my gosh, this is weighing on me that all of these bad things have happened to people kids that have come to me for help, you know, and I, how did I not see the signs? Cause I would probably be, if I were innocent in all this, I would probably be trying to rationalize, you know, like Chrissy was coming to me because of problems at home and Patrick was coming to me because of problems at home. Why did I not realize they probably got hurt by their families or, or, um, Chrissy turned, I hate to say this because we know it's not true, but like Chrissy turned to Eddie for drugs and then he killed her, you know, like, why didn't I see this coming? Or, 
I would be beating myself up as the guidance counselor. And I probably would tell Max if there was something that I knew that would help her. And if nothing else, I would tell her, like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't know much more than you. Like, I know she had headaches and I know she had problems at home and you already know that. You know what I mean? Like, and that probably is all Miss Kelly really knew if she was innocent because, like, she wouldn't have to go into detail like, oh, well, I know Patrick's dad beats him. And I know, you know, you, that part is neither here nor there. It, that The detail would be that he's having trouble at home. That would be like the common denominator. But Fred wasn't having problems at home. Fred was having problems like internally because he was beating up himself with guilt for being in the car accident, right? So I think Miss Kelly could be in league <laughs> with Vecna. I think that the Duffers were basically trying to be like, hey, look, she's wearing a she's wearing a clock. And oh, now they're at her house. Oh, look, there's a big clock on the wall. Hey, listen, do you hear that? It's ticking this whole time. That's not Vecna's clock. That's Miss Kelly's clock. I think that is very possible. The other thing, the other thought that I had when I said remind me later, thank you for reminding me. Um, I think it's possible. I talked yesterday about how Vecna was able to kind of have the same abilities that Kali had, which is make people in the waking world see things that they that aren't there or see things that are not the total truth. Um, I think it's possible. Maybe Miss Kelly is a conjuration of Vecna. I don't know if that's the case, but it's not out of the world of possibility, right? Let me stop this and come back in case this messes up my... Sorry, I know I just like quit talking in the middle of my sentence, but I guess I just assume I do it so often on these that you guys know in case it messed up my, my audio. Um, I was saying something. <laughs> like, I guess it is... I think it's... I think it's equally as possible as her being in line with Vecna um, that he was using that as a way to kind of put out his feelers because um, he may look like just a boogeyman, a monster, but he, inside, he was a human. He knows how things work. He went to school. Um, he would certainly... He, and he is smart. Like, we don't, we don't like to give villains credit for being smart a lot of the time. But he was very smart, um, like Henry was. I'm sure Vecna is, even though he lets rage control him a lot. Um, there's still that calculating mind. And I think it's very possible that he's set up an illusion that can get people to talk to him so he can find out who the most troubled kids are. It's possible that he figured out how troubled Max was by her talking to Miss Kelly because Miss Kelly was him. The same with Chrissy, the same with Patrick, the same with Fred. Um, I mean, I don't know. That That's not something I've heard anybody say. Everybody just thinks that she's in league with him. But I almost, I almost actually, now that it's like out loud, <laughs> I've said it out loud, I feel like it's more possible that she's a conjuration of him. Because, okay, small town America, Hawkins, logic probably, probably I assume she's like a logical person, guidance counselor, you know, like, um, she's, she what, gets a chance meeting from a dark and ugly stranger that is Vecna and just decides to join him? She wasn't acting flayed by any means, like Billy being, like, super weird, staying out of the sun, drinking chemicals. <laughs> I mean, I guess she could have been mixing up, like, a Drano cocktail at home, but you didn't see any proof of her, like, sitting around in the nice bath or um, t walking around outside with, like, a parasol or, you know, getting that sunscreen lotion, you know, suntan lotion sunscreen or whatever. Um, she didn't seem to mind the heat, so I don't think she was flayed. So that, you know, like under the mind flares control like Billy was. So I don't know. It just and then like Vecna would have the image however he wanted. And 
it would make sense to have her adorned somewhere with a clock or watch, you know, hanging right on her because he was so obsessed with time, right? That makes a lot of sense to me now that I've said it. So, like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, thoughts? <laughs> um, I'm just, just going to leave it there and um, see what you guys feel. Um, maybe you think she was just wrong place, wrong time counselor, um, well-intentioned and all, or do you think she was in league with him? Some, like somehow he got a hold of her, him or the mind flayer were controlling her or convincing her, or do you think, or maybe she was just an evil person and was easily swayed, or do you think she was a conjuration of him? Like, what do you think? Do you have a different theory? <laughs> Miss Kelly is suddenly a very interesting topic right now for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm going to leave it at that because I'm pretty sure story time is going to take a minute now. So if you are still around, if you've stuck around for the Stranger Things theories and you are not about the creepy stories, thank you. Um, I see we're at 1920. We're at 1920, you guys. Uh, so 80 even away from 3000, if my math is right. Right? We're, we're close. We're close to 3,000. Um, so yeah, if you, uh, if you're interested in, in all that is to come with Vlogtober, you should probably subscribe. <laughs> um, I also am planning other videos. Like I said, I'm going to do the 30 questions for Halloween. I may add another one just because 31 seems so fitting. I don't know. We'll see. See if I'm feeling creative that day. Um, so I may do that, I might do that Wednesday, because Wednesday will be like the, my night off after work, and I'll be getting some videos done and all that. Um, I will be having some time coming up for some tutorials. Um, I will have, I will have yarn hauls, because I have some yarn ordered, even though there is no Stranger Things yarn from Lion Brand. <laughs> um, I will be doing Vlogmas again, um, and I have things planned for Vlogmas. At the end of this month, I have more yarny content than I have right now. Um, and I have my regular, like, weekly videos, too. I still have, I'm working on my movie Marquee. I'm working on my Ancient Whips. Um, as soon as this Ancient Whip is done, I'm going to actually work on my um, horror movie blanket from my movie and stitch, because I am going to get that thing done by the end of this year. It's, I'm not going into a third year doing that. <laughs> it's going to get done. Um... So I will, yeah, I will have some stuff coming up. So if you want to subscribe, now is the time. You should subscribe and join our little family. And I have something for all of us to do together, um, planned for the new year, like to start the new year out. And it will be probably a year long experience. So, which I'm pretty excited about. Like, hopefully you guys will be on board when I, when I get to talking about that. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for joining me for that. And, uh, if you are leaving, I'll give you a kiss goodbye now and know that I love you and that I will see you again very soon. Um, and if you are ready to stick around for creepy story time, I definitely had to get a drink first. <laughs> um, so I have today. I know I talked, uh, the first day I talked about, the first day I missed because my stupid self read <laughs> a chapter out of a book that I couldn't use. The second day I talked about inspiration for a movie that came from a killing, right? That happened close to me, very close to me. <laughs> like I'm talking like two hours away from me or less. So close. Um, yesterday I told you guys about a couple of eerie experiences of my own. And so for today's creepy story, I thought maybe delve into the world of serial killers. Because this serial killer that I'm going to talk about, and I'm not going to get too graphic, FYI, because I don't really know where YouTube draws the, <laughs> draws the line on uh stuff so while there's probably a lot more i could say about him i'm not gonna get too terribly in depth because 
I don't want to upset the YouTube gods. Um, and I'm going to pull out, I think I'm going to pull out some uh, granny squares or something to work on while I'm talking away. Or I'm going to be like waving that pen around again for who knows how long. You don't need to see my pen waving skills. I have a doll stand for Eddie coming in the mail, but that was me trying to balance Eddie. <laughs> He's like balanced up on a thing of yarn up here. Just like, he's hanging out. He's watching me. He's kind of buddying up with uh, with Dizzy over, over there, my monster. So, I am getting out this. I know it's crinkly packaging because it's like a, a Wish bag. Because I think this was, this might have been eBay yarn. But it was from like eBay or Wish or something. And it was just these random balls of yarn that I had gotten and I balled up. Um, they came, they came like this. I think I got two of each of the colorways in here. And I just decided to do, um, this, this is still attached. I just decided to do some small, like, granny squares that are super busy. And then I'll probably just join them with some solid yarn of some DK, probably, type. Because it, this looks like a DK yarn. But here's the one that I'm working on right now. See, there's some yarny stuff going on. <laughs> Um, this is good practice um, if I start to do my uh, crime talk segment in the next uh, next year. <laughs> Very thirsty though. Okay, so this serial killer that we're going to talk about today, he actually inspired a movie. Also, he inspired several movies. Um, if you are familiar with the most popular being, probably, actually, I, th I think he might have inspired Silence of the Lambs, and that's probably more popular. I don't know if it's more popular, but um, he definitely in inspired. Now, there is a difference between based on and inspired by, <laughs> and um, these things he inspired um, cause I don't think there's anything unless there's like documentary. I mean, there are documentaries, but unless we're talking about documentaries, I don't think there's anything that like is truly his story. Um, but that being said, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was inspired by him. Um, I believe Silence of the Lambs was inspired by him. There were several other movies, but... We are going to talk about the life and times of the serial killer known as the Butcher of Plainfield, Ed Gein. Are you familiar with him? Um, I, I am familiar with him, but I have to say I never <clears throat> used to rank him amongst like, like if you said serial killer to me, um... Well, probably the first name that would strike out to me is Jeffrey Dahmer, but that's because when I was a kid, he was, he was the news, you know, he was like in my lifetime and, and I remember him well. Cause I was like, I was probably like a young teenager. I would, well, or an old like tween or something, <laughs> something like that, like old enough to be like, oh yeah, I definitely remember that. That was me. Um, so, that being said, Jeffrey Dahmer is probably the first person that comes to mind. But, I mean, obviously, there's a whole slew right down to, like, Jack the Ripper and um, Ted Bundy and oh, there's so many. But, um, yeah, Ed Gein uh, inspired a lot of stuff, too. So, I found out when I was looking this up, too, that... <laughs> Um, not only is Ed Gein a Virgo, but he happened to be born on my birthday. Uh, not the same year, but on, on my birthday. Um, birth date, I guess, whichever you want to call it. Um, he was born on August 27th, just like me, but it was 1906. <laughs> this was quite a while before me. Um, let's see. So where to begin? So... His parents were George Philip Gein 
and his mom was August Augusta. I wrote this down. Hold on. Augusta Wilhelmina Gein. That was her full name. Um, and he had an older brother whose name was uh, Henry, Henry George Gein. And Henry, or no, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. George, the dad, George. George was an alcoholic. He was a bad alcoholic. Um, he couldn't hold down a job. Um, so like right from an early young age, that's the image of his father that um, Ed had was just alcoholic dad, couldn't hold a job. At one point, he did own a grocery store in town, in the town they lived in, um, which was La Crosse, Wisconsin. If you're familiar with Wisconsin, I'm not sure where that is. I just know Wisconsin's on the other side of the lake from me. Um, excuse me. Sorry about that. Oh. Anyway, um, but he ended up having to sell it. And he sold it and moved the whole family to Plainfield, Plainfield, um, Wisconsin, where that's where they would end up just taking root, basically. And uh, that's where Ed's story unfolds. <laughs> and um, his mom, his mom was a character. Um, and I don't mean that in a good way. His, <laughs> his mom was super scary woman um, from everything I've read and heard and seen in documentaries. And um, she is, was a very strict, I believe she was Lutheran. She was religious. I believe she was Lutheran, but she was super religious, like super scary religious um, to the point where she, well, first of all, she hated her husband. I mean, and I mean, she hated him. Like a lot of the pastimes that she had included talking trash about George to her sons, um, whether he was there or not. So, I mean, I guess I'm not excusing him for being an alcoholic, but like, that's what he dealt with all the time was this, this woman was angry at the world. Um, she hated women. She was the only woman in her mind that was godly, I guess, um, is a good way to put it. She said that, um, other women were, um, instruments of the devil and the devil's harlots, I think is the, the term that, uh, somebody had said. She, and there's another example of that, that I have later that I wanted to specifically talk about because this woman, this woman was awful. She, discouraged anybody from coming like once they moved to this farm she discouraged anybody from like coming and trying to be like neighborly or friendly she basically just chased them off she didn't want she sort of wanted the farm to be like their sanctuary um and this outside world to just like be gone like in a perfect world it would have been just like in a perfect world, it probably would have been just Augusta and her boys and, like, her husband could just go to because, I mean, she really hated him. So, in pretty early, pretty early on, um, I couldn't find when they moved to um, Plainfield. Maybe if I dug a little deeper, I guess I could have, but I, I didn't find it. But um, in 1940, so, I mean, by the time Ed was, what, 34 well, that's, is that right? He was born in 1906 and his dad died on April 1st of 1940. So, I mean, Ed was in his third and still living at home. Maybe that wasn't that uncommon in the early. I don't know, but he was anyway. Um, he was living at home. So was his older brother and, um, his dad died. And his mom still just like, I, I don't think she even cared. Like she was just like, still carrying on with like preaching to her sons and um, talking about how no women were fit for them and they needed to just stay with her and you know all this stuff like she was basically I don't want to say grooming because I don't think there was any I don't think there was any weirdness going on especially on her part but um there's like definitely like mental and emotional abuse going on and um a back note too, like Ed was already something wasn't fully 
developmentally right with him um, because I read where his teacher said that he would be a disruption to the class, but not because he was an actual disruption, because people would take notice of him. He was very quiet, but he would do stuff like for absolutely no reason at all. He would laugh like as if somebody had told a joke or as if he in his own head had told a joke, but he would laugh out loud. So he would just sit there and just be listening and, you know, just a pair like to the naked eye or to the normal eye or whatever being normal. And then he would just, <laughs> you know, so um, he would draw attention to himself from the class. And because he ended up being different and he, he was slow, I know he had like um, a droop. They said he had a pretty, pretty profound droop to his eye. Um, when you look at pictures of him, I mean, he's his one lid is a little droopier, but like when I read about it, I pictured like some huge, like, <laughs> you know, and like, to me, I never noticed that with him. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he did. And I just didn't notice it, but uh, everyone else did apparently that lit that lived around him and lived in his time and everything. Everybody else did. And, um, so he was already in a bad start with his learning and emotionalness and just at life basically and his mom wasn't helping anything because she was sheltering him telling him that everything in the world but her was evil and um all this bad stuff and um after the dad died um him and his older brother him and henry like they'd go off of the farm to help supplement money but they would so like to go work odd jobs and and be farm hands places and um henry got kind of the taste for normal life that way henry could develop and learn that there was more outside of his mom's like teachings on the farm so henry actually met a woman who was divorced and had two kids and he fell in love with her he had plans to marry her um, or at least move in with her. So maybe it was a little more scandalous than, I don't know if there was actual marriage plan, but he was going to move off the farm and just be with her. And, um, he still cared a lot about his brother. He didn't like, he was very concerned about how Ed and Augusta were, were carrying on with each other. And I don't, again, I don't mean anything like funny going on, but I mean, like just she was like his world. Like he took everything she said as like the gospel truth. You know, like my mom says women are evil, then women are evil. My mom says nobody outside of this family is good to be around us, then nobody outside of this family is good to be around us. You know, like so Henry was worried for him. So whenever they were out like working or basically away from her where she couldn't separate them or talk over him or silence his voice to Ed, he would start trying to talk to Ed. And I'm assuming he was going to try to convince him to also move maybe if his talks had had any effect on Ed, but he would try to like speak, speak badly about her and uh, talk kind of like crap about her and point out, you know, um, her flaws and how crazy she was, I'm assuming, and how mean she was, I'm assuming, because she was not a nice woman, like just because she was saying that, um, they were good and the outside world wasn't. She was not a nice woman. <laughs> um, and Ed wasn't hearing any of it. Like his words, Henry's words were completely wasted. Ed was furious with him for bringing that, you know, to light and saying things about their mother. And um, so one day they were on their own farm, like tending to the the brush and things that needed burning on the land. And a fire got out of control and like it got out of control to the point where it was noticed and the fire department came and was putting it out and um when the fire got put out <laughs> uh henry was nowhere to be found and so like the fireman had gone home and everything and ed decided to then be like where's my brother um oh my brother's missing and so like into the night a search party was looking for henry and they finally found him far away from, like, the, the blaze. And he was face down. And it looked like he had had, um, it looked like he was, he was not burned. He was not affected by the fire at all. But he was, you know, deceased. And um, later, they said that you could tell that he had 
bruises like around his face and his head. Um, and his cause of death had gotten ruled to asphyxiation. So, but the police were not willing to investigate Ed. I assume they, they just kind of, because he was well, he was the weird guy around town, but he, I don't want to say he was well liked, but he was accepted around the town at first. <laughs> he was even um, doing odd jobs like besides farmhand work he was on like a road crew I read he babysat he babysat um people's kids <laughs> um that was crazy to me like but he was really good like the people that reported about that he was apparently really good with the kids and like the kids loved him he was really nice with them which is another scary thought <laughs> um and like kids of all ages I guess he babysat you know like old enough to need a babysitter but like little kids, bigger kids. He was like a, a town babysitter. <laughs> I don't know how to put it, but um, yeah. So the police didn't investigate into it any further. They left it as an accidental death. Like maybe they thought he choked on the smoke and that was the asphyxiation. I, I don't know, but out of sight, out of mind. So that, that happened. <laughs> and, um, let's see, are we off of my first page of notes yet? <laughs> um, after Henry was gone, uh, soon, like really soon after that, cause that happened on May 16th, 1944 when Henry died. Um, and remember the dad died in 1940. So four years later, Henry died. Um, then soon after that, uh, Augusta had a stroke and it left her paralyzed. Um, I'm assuming at least for a while. Cause I know, I think after you have a stroke, you can like start to recover from it if it's not like a really bad one. Um, and her first one wasn't like deadly, um, or anything yet. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, and so like Ed was like scared to death. He didn't want to lose his mom. He was he just sort of became her caretaker, solely her caretaker. He wasn't like out and about in town anymore. He stayed home with his mom, mama's boy to the end, you know. Um, and the part that I wanted to tell you as another example of like how awful this woman was came at this period in time because he was taking care of her and there, she got well enough that like he had her out and I'm assuming in uh, his car, but so he had her in his car or whatever. They went out to buy straw from another farmer. And this guy, and I don't, this would trigger me. So I'm just, if any sort of violence towards animals bothers you, skip this little bit. But I'm going to be as gentle about this as possible. Trust me, because this is awful. This farmer was abusing an ant. He was beating him. He wasn't doing anything else, but he was beating him. He was abusing a dog. And, um, his, the, a, a woman who lived with him came out and she was trying to stop him. Like in, even in front of like Ed and his mom, she was trying to make him stop and, um, get the dog away from him. And basically he ignored her and he kept going and it didn't end well for the little dog. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, and Ed actually had recalled this later, like after he was in custody, but, um, his mom was furious. She was very upset. She was angry. Um, she wasn't angry at him for what he was doing to that poor dog. She wasn't angry that the dog got hurt. She was so furious that this woman came out and in, this is her words, not mine, um, like her emotions, not mine. It's not her word for word verbatim, but uh, she was so furious that this woman dared to come out and speak to this man this way when that was not his wife, that she had no right to come out there. And then she called the woman his harlot, basically. <laughs> um, and that was, that was her opinion on it. Like this man can do whatever he wants and she can't stop him. That's not his wife. She has no say in what he does. Like how dare she? Um, that, and that was it. Like, that's why she was mad. She was not a nice woman. Um, 
so she was super mad about that. Ed remembered that and everything. Um, and that was in, that was in 1945. And then soon after that, she had another stroke. And this time her health was affected, like, much worse. She started going downhill. And um, she, like, even though Ed was just spending his whole time, like, nursing her, she spent um, very little time left in this world. <laughs> and um, she died on December 29th, 1945. So a year and a half or so after his brother died. So within five years, he lost his dad, his brother, and his mother. Now, whether his brother was his fault or not remains to be... Well, it doesn't remain to be seen. There was never any ruling on it. And now now there's, you know, 80 years later, nobody's going to go finding out, I suppose. But um, in theory, according to the law, he didn't do it, so... Um, so obviously he was devastated. He was super upset. He was completely alone because he had been, um, he had ostracized himself. He had allowed her to let, to get him like ostracized, um, from everyone. Um, he was just alone out there, uh, on this farm and he, kept the farm and he kept himself afloat because he did go work some more like odd jobs and stuff around farms and everything and he did at one point sell off some of the land around the farm like he had the land his brother had owned he sold off some acreage of that um but he kept the farmhouse he kept the majority of the farm and um he started boarding off all of the rooms like he boarded off like his his mother's um her bedroom and then his mother's like the sitting room I guess where she sat um all the different rooms that he associated his mother with <clears throat> he boarded them up um so what he was left in I believe was like the kitchen I'm not even sure if he had a bathroom in the house to begin with because it was such an old house it might have just been an outhouse situation for all I know or if there was a bathroom, he may have boarded it up because um, I think it was basically like mostly just the kitchen that he was left in. And he let that go just, I don't know, like the saying is like to seed or whatever, like to squalor, like awful. He clearly didn't clean anything. He Everything was dirty. Everything was just thrown about. Um, if it was like today's like world, there'd be like McDonald's wrappers everywhere, I'm sure, and just junk food laying around and, um, you know, like it'd be an episode of Hoarders. <laughs> that would be what was going on because the house was just, I mean, the room he was left with, whatever rooms that that was, was just nasty. But um, since he had boarded them up, the rooms that his mom stayed in were wonderful and pristine and everything. Um, well, so that had been... 1945 that all that started by 1947 he had started making nightly not night not every night but he he had started wandering out at night and venturing out and his adventures had taken him to local cemeteries and i don't know if it i don't remember if anyone ever said like what initially compelled him i'm just gonna assume like kind of he maybe he knew the first person that he found the grave for I don't know but curiosity type thing maybe was the first thing that compelled him but he decided to dig up the freshly buried casket and um that occurred uh he admitted to making 40 at least 40 different trips between 1947 and 1952 so within five years, he made <clears throat> 40 trips to the cemetery. I think it was to three different cemeteries that he, that was what he spent his time doing, was going to cemeteries. And um, he admitted that, I think he said in the 40 trips, like he did um, dig up any time he found a fresh grave that he knew there was like a woman in, he dug it up. Um, he said there was many times that he left empty-handed because he would find something that he didn't like or 
um, not what he was looking for. Let me stop this. This is going to be a long one, I told you. We're almost done. All right, sorry about that. We are almost done, though. Um, I'm getting to it, I promise. Um, but there were at least 10 instances over those five years where he admitted that he did find what he was kind of, like, his, his dream find, I guess. Uh, which was he found someone that reminded him of his mother. And he took her home with him. Yep, that's, that's what he did. <laughs> um, his dream was to make a suit that was his woman's suit. Um, he wanted to essentially be his mother. He said uh, he, he would crawl into her skin if he could and become her. And that's what he wanted to do. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Where do you go from there, Ed? <laughs> so, not that grave robbery of bodies is innocent, but that was probably his most innocent of crimes. <laughs> um... And like I said, the women had to remind him it would be like a, you know, a woman in her middle age, the late middle ages of life and that reminded him of his mom. It had to be like the perfect, the perfect find, basically. Um, what he got caught for was he had made a trip into town one night. Um, I believe he was looking for ammo. I'm not sure what it was. He went to the hardware store anyway. And um, whatever he was purchasing, he went and purchased it. And the owner of it, of the hardware store, who was a well-known woman in the town, by the way, her name was uh, Bernice Warden. Uh, she was there. Like, she had a son, and, and he minded the place also, but it happened to be Bernice that was there that evening and was um, selling Ed <laughs> the stuff that he was looking for, whatever it was, and um, she ended up coming up missing. And she was reported missing, obviously, by her son, like, that next morning. And they went and they searched around the hardware store and there was definite evidence uh, there was um, blood at the crime scene there was um, I think it had looked like a struggle behind the cash register there was um, even blood on I think there was a trail actually if I remember right but there was blood even on the stack of receipts and the top receipt was Ed Gain, and that was the proof they needed that he was the last recipient there. He was the last person to likely see her alive. So they went out to his house and checked, and um, they... I don't want to say too graphically anything from here on out because... Uh, I'm leaving it up to your imagination as to why they called him the Butcher of Plainfield. But they found her body. They found her body and it was described to be... Uh, Ed had basically treated it like a deer. So f anybody who knows what happens to a deer after you go hunting, that is um, what happened to this poor woman who, whose only crime was that she, I guess she reminded Ed of his mother. She fit the description well enough. Um, and she was actually the second woman in town to have gone missing. The other one was um, this really feisty, I think. She was described as a really feisty, um, I think she was a barkeeper or a restaurant owner. Um, and she had gone missing and nobody ever knew, I don't think, what had happened with her. And, um, which, spoiler alert, um, she was also found at Ed's house. But, um, Ed had claimed that he didn't mean to 
do that to Bernice, that he was at the shop, that he had been um, looking at a rifle and had went to load it. And it had, according to him, went off and by accident when he put some ammo in it, like, why would you be loading ammo into a gun that you were just looking at? Um, I've never bought a gun, so I don't know if that's something that you do. But if I were to buy one, I don't think I would be like, let's see how it handles ammo. Uh, maybe I would. I don't know. But I don't know why I would. <laughs> um, but either way, neither here nor there on that one, because obviously I'm ignorant to whether that would be a thing or not. Um, Ed says that's what happened and that it accidentally went off. And so he didn't mean for it to happen. But then he says that he didn't remember anything after that. So when the police found Bernice and this other woman in the states that they were in, um, they also found a lot of other items and parts of other like trophies I guess of other either victims or his graveyard searches and the items that they found were crazy I wrote down some of them but I only wrote down like the um like I'm trying to keep everything not too grotesque <laughs> um Maybe if I do my, my crime series, I would put up a full, whole warning at the beginning and really dive into it. Because there's a lot of stuff that I'm not mentioning, like a lot. that. Um, but I'm trying to just give you the gist of it, right? Um, but some of the, the items were like, they were pieces made into usable items. Um, they found his famous woman suit. They found different... It wasn't one full piece. Like, I guess I assumed it was kind of like a jumpsuit, I guess. It was um, like a corset and leggings and masks. And so they found that stuff. They found a belt. They found a lampshade. They found chairs that had the seats made of this material. They um, found bedpost decorations they found there was a lot, there was a lot more. There was a lot more. It was pretty bad. Um, and all of that was amongst how, even if he didn't have these things in his house, his, um, remember his house itself was just nasty and dirty. So where does that line end? And the, the violence side take over because squalor and dirtiness can uh, smell kind of like an old crime scene <laughs> so I would imagine it was really even more unpleasant for those poor people that had to discover that um it it was a horror show let me say um like truly um I guess but yeah truly they needless to say took him in they um scheduled trial his trial was scheduled so this had happened in Ooh, did i not write down the year it happened in 52 i believe is when it happened and then his trial did not start until november 21st 1957 um, and when they had the trial, he pled not guilty, um, via insanity and he was found to be diagnosed with schizophrenia and they claimed that he was, he was found unfit to serve trial. So they sent him to a mental hospital for like the criminally insane and he stayed there, um, he did get transferred to a different one. So he was spent that time split between two different facilities, but he stayed there until he was deemed fit for trial again. 
And that trial was, so that was in 1957. The new trial wasn't until 1968. So he spent all that time like rehabilitating in mental facilities. Um, He was found guilty during the next trial. However, he was also found criminally insane or or whatever. Um, So he was committed again to the same, the first mental, um, facility that he was first put into. And that's where he was to stay for the rest of his life. Um, while he was there, like when his stay had started, I believe is when his like a a state had gotten, I think once they probably knew that's where he was going. Cause I'm assuming that once you go to prison and you have no other relatives or anything for your property to go to that maybe that's why the state took it over because like it would help pay for some of his bills and stay and stuff maybe but for whatever reason the state did you know take it over um and they were going to sell his um his stuff his house was appraised I forgot how much it was valued then, like in 1967, but I read that in 2021, that amount would have only been like $44,000. So that's like how bad of condition his house was in, considering it was sitting on all this land too. Basically, I think it was just the value of the land, it seems like, because I know that land sells for somewhere like a a fairly decent price on its own, right? Um, Depending on where it is, I guess, but... Um, so they did sell his car and they sold that to like a carnival to, I forget which carnival. It wasn't like Ringling Brothers or anything, but it was a, like a carnival or or a sideshow or something. And this guy bought it and ended up making it an attraction. And he, um, charged people a quarter to... I don't know if they were allowed in it or if they just looked at it, but (laughs) it charged people a quarter to see it one way or another. Um, So you could have seen his car that was what he used to go to the cemetery and haul his trophies back. And um, yeah, so that, that was a thing. But then all of the items in his house supposedly were just like the the bad things that were made out of parts um they were supposedly destroyed um don't know whether they were or not because i heard that at least one of the there was a there were bowls that were made and i heard that at least one of those and one of the chairs and their the lampshade i heard were out and about somewhere with a collector i'm sure but so obviously those didn't get destroyed if that's true. Um and I'm sure cuz I mean you hear about stuff like that all the time like oh yeah we're going to go destroy it after we take what we want and make some profit off it you know. So I mean it's very likely. But then when his house was going to be sold there was just a random fire started that basically was contained, didn't go anywhere but in the vicinity of the house, and basically took that whole like horror show off the market as far as the house itself was concerned. And um, it is an odd coincidence that the uh, fire marshal was the son of the last victim of Ed's. So he didn't seem very concerned in solving the mystery, whether it was accidental or arson. I don't think it was ever fully looked into. It just happened, and that was that, basically. And uh, I guess even, like, when Ed heard about it when he was in his um, facility, he even said, like, he shrugged and just said, like, just as well. Like, (laughs) so he even knew, like, whatever. Um, He seemed like, it seemed like I read that he got pretty I don't know if complacent is the word but like and I'm sure he I don't think his mental state ever got better because I wanted to say recovered but remember I said even as a kid his his mental state wasn't 
on par with everyone else his age. I don't think it ever developed or healed or whatever, like healed from the damage his mom did, if that if that was it, or just developed if it hadn't developed or whatever, you know, his actual issue was. Um, I think he just stayed in that mindset, basically. So, um, reform's not a word that I guess you would associate with him. And it wouldn't matter, like, in the eyes of the law, anyway. He was staying where he was staying. Um, when he did die, he died in... It's crazy to think, but he died in... On July 26, 1984, when he was 77 years old. So, I was alive. I was <laughs> tiny. But I was alive when Ed Gein was alive. I think of him, and I think... Of somebody that lived so 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 long ago but he was alive when I was alive at least you know it's crazy and we share the same birthday <laughs> um yeah that's crazy too but anyway I'm off topic um he was buried in in Wisconsin he was buried between his mom and his dad I believe and um, people started taking chips off of his headstone, his gravestone, um, for souvenirs. You know, people are, they just want souvenirs. So they did um, what they shouldn't do and did that. And um, eventually that got out of control and his entire gravestone was stolen. Um, it was recovered. Um, so that happened in Wisconsin, and it was recovered in Seattle. So, like, I mean, whoever went searching for it really did their homework and found that because they went across the country to find it. Um, so well done on their part. But once it was recovered, it went straight to the sheriff's department of the town, and his it, it said his grave was unmarked but not unknown. Because they, the whole town, I guess, knows, you know, I mean, how do you not know, I suppose, like with something that high profile and that crazy. And, and now we all know that if you find his parents' gravestones, you know where he's at too, I guess. But so he's not unknown, but he is unmarked because of the, the thievery and stuff, which is actually really sad. Um, because even though he did terrible things, I don't know. I just don't like messing with stuff like that. So, like, I just feel like that's bad karma, you know? Um, no matter who it was. Like, I just feel like that's bad karma to be messing with stuff like that. <laughs> but that's just me, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, that is, that's it. Um, I told you this was a long one. I knew it would be. Um... But that is the story of the Butcher of Plainfield, Ed Gein. And yeah, like I said, he inspired several different movies. He also um, was one of the inspirations, I think they said, for Michael Myers. If I read, did I read that? I'm not sure, but I feel like he was. And it wasn't so much his story and Michael's story that like two and two went together for me but what struck me about his story that related to the halloween was if you have seen the rob zombie versions of halloween i don't remember if the originals were like this too to be honest because it's been a while since i've seen like the early originals i should go back and rewatch those but um in rob zombies halloween when michael's mom died the town, like, her gravestone was also, like, desecrated. And then I think that was stolen. And, um, just the thievery of his headstone reminded me of that. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a heavy one, I guess. But it is definitely creepy. Like, Especially some of the things that I did have to kind of leave unsaid. If you look up all of the different items that he made, 
There is a pretty extensive list, and it is pretty creepy, the things that he wanted to make. And just, like, my imagination goes crazy from there. Like, what if he was never caught, what would he have continued? Would he have ended up, like, with a a bed fully made? Because he was already making bedpost decorations. I mean, what where do you go from the woman's suit? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, um, so I have told the story of Ed Gein. Anyway, hopefully I have delivered on the creepy factor for you, but not too much. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know where to go from that. So I think I will just end up going. <laughs> and I've talked well long enough. So I will let you go until tomorrow. Um, yeah, I love you guys. And thanks for listening to me. And I appreciate it. And yeah, I will talk to you very soon. Bye guys. Uh Oh, hmm. Maybe I'm going to stay with you. <laughs>